DuckTales, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's what everybody, uh, Looney Tunes, that's what all my friends were watching. I didn't get that. Instead, on... When I was at Full Circle Farm with Dennis, y'all remember Dennis? Hi, I'm Dennis from Full Circle Farm. We produce nutrient-dense foods so people can heal their bodies. He asked me something. He noticed, first of all, that I was up to like 1, 1 1.30, more than one night at his place editing videos. He said, what motivates you? That was a good question, and I've had a lot of time to think about it, but I think there's one underlying general reason why I work so hard and then there's four specific reasons why I'm working so hard right now. First, the general reason. Let's go way back to when I was a little boy. My, when everybody else was having the weekend, watching their Saturday morning cartoons, and remember this was in a time that cartoons only come on on Saturday morning. DuckTales, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that's what everybody, uh, Looney Tunes, that's what all my friends were watching. I didn't get that. Instead, on Saturday morning, we got up early and worked our tails off. In the winter, we cut and sold firewood, or in the summer, it seems like we were mowing. Although it drove me nuts at the time. I couldn't stand to work like that. It's now one of the most cherished things I've ever learned from my dad. I have this work ethic, and now that helps me to get things done. Let's go back in time for a moment. All right, son, we gotta cut split, haul, and stack this 87 loads of firewood. You ready? I don't know. Papa training. Well, son, it's still cold outside and people still need their firewood. <laughs> Dad, can I go watch cartoons with my friends? No. Pop, can I take a break? Before I tell you what he said, let's talk about the four specific reasons I'm working so hard right now. First, I'll call it the Scarlet O'Hara experience. You guys remember? You guys know Gone with the Wind? Remember when she experienced great financial stress and she swore she would never let that happen again? Here, here's some of her quote. As God is my witness, they're not going to lick me. I'm going to live through this and when it's all over, I'll never be hungry again. No, nor any of my folk. Now, we never got hungry. We never got that impoverished. But we came close. And when I experienced Lyme disease and our bills exceeded what we could give in relation to the way we were having to slow down physically, we came into a really hard spot. He got so sick that we canceled camp that next year. And we were just, you know, at rock bottom and scared because we were like, where are we gonna have money? And we had supporters at the time, so they were still supporting us financially. Not a lot, but enough to get us by. Um, and we were on food assistance then. It was really hard, like when I would, like my mom would sometimes meet me at the grocery store to help me with the kids and I would have to check out and like, I would slide, I would like hide the card and then slide it and like stick it back in my wallet. Mm -hmm. One doctor told me, like, until the stress is relieved, he'll never get better. And that was a really scary point for me because, like, how do you relieve financial stress without working? And, but you have to be better to work. And so it was just like a really scary point for me because I was like, what are we going to do? That was a clip from a movie a friend of mine, Brian Harris, made on a, a documentary about our success story. If you want to check it out, I'll leave the full movie in the description. Like Scarlett O'Hara, we are not willing to go back there. We were working our tails off. We worked our tails off and we got out of that spot. And we're going to keep on doing that so we never experience that again. Hard work is the answer. Secondly, we absolutely love this. We love making movies. I believe we found what we were destined to do. What are we supposed to, what we're supposed to do with our lives? Not everybody's made to do this. Some people should be writing, some people should be public speaking, some people should be making movies and labor, labor intensive stuff. We found what we love to do. 
Third, we want a lasting legacy. When we were on the uh, the lunatic farm tour with Joel Salatin yesterday or the day, whenever that was, I captured him in a moment getting on top of the tractor, speaking to the crowd, speaking to the crowd inside of that greenhouse, giving his sermon, and I said, we're living in a special time. I'm experiencing something very special, and those who outlive him will dream and wish they would have had a chance to see him, see the farm, with him on it, shake his hand. But then I went to the bookstore and I saw the nine or ten or however many books he's written on the shelf. And guess what? Those will outlive him. And they'll be with us foreverish. And I realized just today, my videos, these videos that I'm working so hard on, even here, work until 2.30 in the morning, uh, two nights in a row, then 1.30 the third night. Now, I'm really pouring into this and we, all, we can't always work that hard. But I do it because it's there and it's changing people's lives. It's inspiring them. The earth is becoming a better place because of it. And it's always there. I may pass on tomorrow. My movies will still be there. So you want to know what my dad told me when we asked him, can we just take a break? This is what he said. Yes, when we're done. So you know what, folks? I'll rest when the job's done. I am passing so many conventional farms along this trip. I got an example for you. When we left White Oak Pastures, we were going, I don't know, it was probably, it was, it was, dark, it was after dark. And we looked over to the right and we saw these lights coming on and we said, what is that? And we were in farm country and we came up on it and it was like this, it was like this animal factory. It was like this dairy factory. It was one of those even where they had all the cows on this big rotating wheel. It was absolutely nuts. They're probably milking those cows three times a day. They probably never see their calves. They're probably pumping them with all kinds of junk. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, look, here's a book. We saw it at Joel Salatin's farm in his shop. Let's go through it a little bit here. I think you can see the urgency there. Now, one more reason why we work so hard. Have you ever tried to rest with four chiddlers? Here, let me show you what that's like. Okay, let's say I got some tea. Hey kids. What? We're gonna relax. Come on out here, Josiah. Uh, come on out here. We're gonna we're gonna relax, alright? Can everybody just relax? Yeah. Say maybe for 20 minutes. I'm just gonna chill out right here and relax. You just guys stay right here. And if you need, if you need to, you can go back and get something and just come back, okay? guys but there's just no uninterrupted relaxation that's all well I hope you enjoyed my little rant about hard work today on the Great American Farm Tour it's a catch-up day planning day <clears throat> get a few things day so we thought why not answer some of your questions come here kids this one's for you Marcel asked can you guys make any exotic animal noises yeah what how does a lion go <laughs> 
Can you do it, Mr. Brown? Can you, what about an elephant? Can you guys make an elephant noise? No. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> on the bus. We tried. Our first stop is the Polyface Farm Store. Classic. And my very first chicken book, Pastured Poultry Profits. You see that, Brown? You see that? Classic reading. You want to read it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the second farming book I ever read, You Can Farm, goes over the various enterprises of how to make money on the farm. The third farming book I ever read, Salad Bar Beef. I personally implemented this one on a small scale and it works. Moving the cows every day and selling cows as beef. I haven't read this one yet, but it looks like one of the funner ones. Everything I want to do is illegal. Also a fun looking one. Holy cows and hog heaven. <laughs> if you want more theory and preaching from Joel, the sheer ecstasy of the lunatic farmer. Folks, this ain't normal. And his latest one, celebrating the pigness of the pig. I think I'll get that one now. Pigerator pork, salad bar beef, and pastured poultry. Did you enjoy that book? Are y'all done? A big apologies to some of you. I thought everyone knew who Joel Southton was that was watching the show. Many of you don't, and that's okay. I highly encourage you. I'm telling you, this is gonna be one of the best farms on the tour. I highly encourage you to check out that link below. I'll link a site. That's where you can find out about his books, the tours here, other opportunities with him. Go and check that out. We already stocked up on all kinds of good. What did we get today? Pigness of the Pig, the book, and some Rome sticks. Yesterday we stocked up on eggs, meat. This is not just Rome sticks. This is Polyface <laughs> pork Rome sticks. Yeah, they partnered with Rome sticks yep. to get their own pork package. And that they'll ship anywhere. They don't yes. ship their fresh goods anywhere but, but they, they do ship their ship rome sticks them. around the world now we're on our way to lowe's hopefully that's the second and last stop hopefully have they have everything we need tyler this is a question for you tyler wants to know if you ever drive the bus i think i will i'm i'm working up to <laughs> it uh, i heard one time a saying when you're unsure of something you just Put it in your head and you just kick it around, the idea. Just kick their idea around. Well, I've been kicking the idea around and it's getting to be a little bit easier. I actually did drive the bus a little bit in a parking lot to continue to kind of get a feel. I was, and it was when we were towing the van that time because I haven't really driven it a lot with towing the van. So yes, I do plan to drive the bus, most likely on the highway, on a highway situation probably will never drive it in a city situation, although you never say never. Wildside Pasture wants to know, how can we bring Hubby home with a farm enterprise? I'm gonna go with Joel Salatin's recommendation on that one and do Pastured Poultry Profit, starting with the Cornish Cross Meat Bird in the Pastured Poultry Pen. I highly recommend his book, Pastured Poultry Profits. Super Stash wanted to know, what's the what's my favorite thing to do when the camera's not rolling? I'd say get in the bath and read a good book. I am Panda, to answer your question, if I could only have three hens, what breed? I'd probably go with the Rhode Island Red. Beauty, how about you answer this? Okay. Dirt Cheap Homesteader wants to know, what surprised you or what did you learn about visiting Salatin's farm? I think what surprised me the most was that... Hold on one second, let me think about that. Okay. I think what surprised me the most is that the neighbors don't practice these practices. They don't rotationally graze and that just surprises me to be neighbors with a guy like Joel Salatin and to not subscribe to what he's teaching blows my mind. We're at Lowe's checking out the tractors. Jordan wants to know, when we get back, are we gonna get a guard goose? Faux show! Jonah, Hartnook wants to know, what's your favorite animal you've seen on the tour so far? Alligators and dolphins. Gideon, what's but. your favorite animal to see on the tour so far? 
Toys? Yeah. Toy animals? Yes. Alligator, turtle, and pig. Jess asked a popular question. How, if I've applied for the tour, which by the way, it's not too late, I'll leave the link to a video I made on how to be featured on a tour. If we haven't been in your area, it's not too late. She wants to know how they'll, when they'll know. I'll give you probably a week to three weeks notice. Hopefully more on the three week side. Are we going to New Jersey? Real soon. There's a place called Digger USA. It's a place where these guys can drive real dirt movers. That's gonna be interesting. Oh look who's here. What'd you get us, honey? A uh, dehumidifier and then a, a squeegee. Which one should I get? This is a squeegee to get the water out of the bottom of our, of our tub. tub. I don't like that this handle so short. You're supposed to buy like a really big handle, but I don't yeah. like that. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. Go with that one. Okay. Let's see what kind of dehumidifier you got. That's for de dehumidifying the entire bus. Lily. What is your favorite animal on the tour so far? Um, bunny. Bye bye, Luz. Going back to Maple. One more question from Sundos. If you could eat any junk food, any one junk food, what would it be? Probably a donut. <laughs> ah! I think I'd have, I used to make the meanest fried biscuits and gravy. Scratch made. I don't know if I'd have a donut. I think I would maybe have. <laughs> Changing her mind, folks. See, these are really hard. Cake, dessert. That's, I'll say dessert, because that encompasses everything. <laughs> That's a safe answer. It does. All right, wrapping up the vlog okay, here. A dessert with wheat. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> because we're not allowed to have gluten. Anyway, wrapping up the vlog here. Tomorrow's going to be cool. We're moving again. Going to go towards where we're going to go to Washington, D.C. We won't be featuring tomorrow, but hopefully we're going to see this cavern along the way, and we'll feature that. But then we're going to spend a couple of, de couple of days in the nation's capital.